With peace, security, prosperity and hope restored by the NRM government, Uganda is secure from corner to corner and this has enabled social economic transformation. The Uganda People's Defense Forces, UPDF, remains a pro-people's army built on strict discipline, anchored in the code of conduct and on good leadership, and continues to defend and protect the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Uganda. The land forces have safeguarded every inch of this country from any incursion. As a statutory institute and service arm of the Ugandan military, the Uganda People's Defense Air Force, UPDAF, has protective wings of the nation and has played a big role in promoting national peace and security. To further tighten the security detail as a nation, local defense units, LDU, as an auxiliary element of the UPDF, have been gradually recruited to boost security, especially in urban centers. The UPDF has deployed a total of 2,000 troops to fight against desert locusts. So far, the operation has been successful. The Uganda Police Force, with its mandate to protect the lives and property of Ugandans, also continues to keep law and order and maintenance of overall security and public safety in Uganda. In a bid to combat crime, over 2,000 CCTV cameras have been installed on the streets of different towns and along major highways around the country. Gun fingerprinting has also been undertaken for all security agencies and private firearms. Uganda has gained mileage in terms of regional influence with its involvement in Somalia under African Union mission in Somalia, AMISOM. The Uganda People's Defense Forces, working with other troop-contributing countries in support of the Somali National Forces, are successfully combating terrorism. And with efforts from all other security agencies, Uganda remains a safe and secure ground for social, economic and political development. Furthermore, the government, in its effort to ensure self-sustainability, has supported the military to produce goods and services for the defense forces and the general public. National Enterprise Corporation, NEC, with its subsidiaries, Luwero Industries Limited, NEC Uzima Limited, NEC Fan Katonga and Choga Dynamics are a sustainable commercial arm of the Uganda Defense Forces that generates goods and services for progressive social, economic transformation and development amongst the Defense Forces, veterans and the civil society. The Nyoka Military Conversion Facilities in Nakasongola and Magamaga produce infantry fighting vehicles. His Excellency, President Museveni, has also put in place more measures to wipe out crime and insecurity in Uganda. The energy sector. Power supply, this is our lifeline. This is a necessity for us. Without power, plants like this cannot work. If we don't have power, life also becomes hard for us. We solely depend on that. Uganda is richly endowed with abundant energy resources which are fairly distributed throughout the country. These include hydropower, which accounts for about 84%, biomass, solar, geothermal, pit and fossil fuels. The country currently generates 850 megawatts of installed capacity with effective generation of approximately 710 megawatts of which approximately 645 megawatts is hydro and 101.5 megawatts is thermal generating capacity. The government of Uganda is building additional large hydropower facilities such as mm -hmm. 
President Museveni is fully committed towards the energy sector. With several rural electrification projects completed, government strategy is to achieve 51% coverage by 2030 and 100% by 2040. Power extension has enhanced value addition and also expansion of industries and manufacturing in Uganda. The health sector. Uganda's health sector has continued to grow during the NRM government. With an organized national health system and health delivery in place, the health sector in Uganda continues to make major strides with a more improved referral structure growing from just one facility in 1986 to currently over 17. Specialized government hospitals like Uganda Heart Institute, Uganda Cancer Institute, a 450-bed specialized women and neonatal hospital Mulago, Uganda National Health Laboratory Services, National Mental Referral Hospital Butabika, and Specialized Viral Testing Regional Center have also played a key role in government's effort of supporting people's health to enhance social economic development. With government's efforts to combat malaria, long-lasting insecticidal mosquito nets have been distributed countrywide, hence tremendously reducing the rate of malaria prevalence. Due to the wide coverage of health centers, distances to medical services have been shortened, enabling access to health care within a five-kilometer radius. The drop on infant maternal mortality deaths has improved the quality of life, which has contributed to long life expectancy and population growth. President Museveni's good leadership against COVID-19 has been hailed internationally because majority of the infected cases have fully recovered. The UPDF medical teams were deployed in various hospitals, including Mulago National Referral Hospital to support the anti-COVID-19 effort. The UPDF established a 100-bed capacity reception center to support anti-COVID-19 efforts. Government was able to distribute food to over 2 million people countrywide affected by the lockdown. Education sector. With tremendous achievements in the education sector, government continues supporting and enabling children to access free education under universal primary education, universal secondary education, and technical education with a minimal cost to parents. With the increasing number of government schools, there is at least one primary school in 6,167 parishes around the country and a total of 256 new classrooms have been added for government primary schools. In a bid to increase access to education, the government is currently building complete secondary schools in terms of infrastructure in sub-counties around the country. This is in addition to 1,107 government-aided secondary schools and privately set up modern schools. To address teacher-to-student pressures, over 4,520 teachers have been recruited and more job opportunities for secondary teachers created. Teacher attendance has also greatly improved tremendously. As the world changes in the face of technology and new ways of life demand industrialization. Infrastructure development is on the course as more roads are tarmacked and rehabilitated. One-stop border posts have been set up to quicken exports and imports. This has greatly contributed to the growth of tax revenue. 
With the completion of Karuma Dam, the country has excess power and this has boosted industrialization. Industrial parks that opened in 2018 and 2019 are having more factories set up and opened, which will generate more jobs and tax revenue. The main industrial park in Namanve, Wakiso district, is having more factories starting operations. Other industrial parks in Kapeka in Nakaseke, Mbalala in Mukono, Mbale and Tororo are getting busier producing generating income and jobs. The government continues to boost industrialization with more industries opening in the different parts of the country. The ICT sector. The ICT sector in Uganda has been vibrant and dynamic. It has now turned into an inevitable tool of socio-economic development. The Uganda Communications Commission, UCC, is an independent regulator to oversee and promote development of the communication sector. Furthermore, government developed a national ICT initiative support program that has boosted groups of innovators with over 2.5 billion shillings. The government of Uganda aims to build a digitally enabled society that is secure, sustainable, innovative, to create a positive social and economic impact through technology-based empowerment. Communications Infrastructure Network today covers almost all the districts in the country. Efforts by the government towards e-governance and global distance learning are some of the good performance indicators in the sector. Works and transport. Road transport. The Ugandan economy and population is growing and the government has placed high priority on the development and maintenance of infrastructure, mainly roads, to accelerate the social economic development of the country. Uganda had a road network of only 987 kilometers in 1986, at the time the NRM took over power. To date, with a total national road network estimated at 78,100 kilometers, the length of paved roads has increased and continues to increase over the years. Commissioned on the 17th October 2018 by the President of Uganda, the 525-meter long cable stayed new Ginger Nile Bridge is the second of its kind in East Africa. The government has also constructed several other bridges countrywide. Air transport. Air transport is playing an increasing role in the promotion of tourism and in regional integration. Uganda Airlines has been revived and this is opening many more job opportunities, raising our flag high globally and generating income for the country. Entebbe International Airport is currently the main functional exit from an entry point into the country. The airport renovation aims to increase passenger terminal capacity and also increase the availability and frequency of international flights. Rail transport. The increasing export and import cargo volumes are creating a significant investment potential in the railway transport. Greater Kampala passenger railway services have revived with an average ridership of 40,000 passengers per month. This has eased transport around Kampala and neighboring areas. 
water transport. Over 131 inland water vessels have been approved and licensed to provide water transport services mainly on Lex Victoria, Choga and Albert. Agricultural sector. Agriculture is the core sector of Uganda's economy. It contributes 25% of Uganda's GDP and employs more than 72% of Ugandans. The sector also currently contributes 52% of the country's total exports. At the time of NRM takeover in 1986, the civil wars that hit the country in the 1980s had greatly affected the sector, mainly in the northern and eastern parts of the country. However, the NRM government, through National Agricultural Advisory Services, NATS program, has addressed these drawbacks by providing advisory services to the farmers and supplying them with quality seeds and gardening tools. Operation Wealth Creation, a program under NADS and executed by the UPDF, is also transforming the lives of Ugandans through improved agricultural production and for the first time in Uganda's history, 35% of Uganda's 80% arable land is under cultivation and this is attributed to inputs availed through Operation Wealth Creation. Coffee is Uganda's second largest commodity export after tourism. With about 1.7 million households in Uganda growing coffee, the government has put in more efforts to lay a strong foundation for long-term competitiveness that is socially, environmentally and economically sustainable and also ensure that Uganda's coffee flourishes throughout the world. Irrigation Presidential initiative to promote agro-industrialization for local economic development, AgriLED, was launched in 2019. And in implementation of the national irrigation policy, solar water pumps have been delivered in different parts of the country and rehabilitation and development of irrigation schemes is ongoing. Fish. The fisheries sector remains the second highest foreign exchange honor for Uganda. Fish has transformed into a formidable food and business product, generating incomes and jobs for many and earning the government lots of local and export revenues. T. In the financial year 2018 to 2019, Tea exports generated 91.7 million US dollars, approximately 336 billion shillings in revenue. In the past three years, 2017 to 2019, through Operation Wealth Creation, 396,183,050 tea seedlings were distributed in 21 tea growing districts. The sector targets to produce 112,000 metric tons by 2020 with exports valued at approximately 155 million US dollars. Youth and Women Empowerment Uganda currently has the second youngest population in the world with over 70% below 30 years. The government has invested heavily in youth projects, creating more opportunities for the youth to engage in income-generating activities. The Uganda Women Entrepreneurship Program has been running since 2015, with over 9,381 projects around the country. These projects aim at equipping young women with the core principles and wealth creation skills. Gender Affirmative Action has provided a platform for women representatives to occupy oppositions of decision-making. Land, Water and Environment With government's efforts to create thriving environments and communities, it is important to note that access to clean, safe water has increased from 16% as of 1986 to 73%, but also 
improved sanitation and hygiene in rural and urban communities around the country. Furthermore, the Ugandan government has formulated a number of policies to regulate land use and impacts on the environment. Government agencies such as National Environmental Management Authority, NEMA, National Forestry Authority, NFA, among others, have tremendously contributed to the social economic development and wise use and conservation of natural resources. The Commission of Inquiry in Two Land Matters was also set up in 2016 to look into the effectiveness of the law on land acquisition, administration, management and registration. Climate change has provoked floating islands on lakes Victoria and Choga, affecting hydropower dams, bridges and landing site infrastructure, including houses. However, these floating islands have been successfully removed by the UPDF. Tourism sector. Tourism in Uganda is focused on Uganda's wildlife and landscape with its impressively beautiful flora and fauna. It is a major driver of employment, investment and foreign exchange, contributing 7.7% of the country's GDP and 6.7% of the total national employment. Uganda, whose tourism sites get global endorsement as a must visit has registered a tremendous increase in the number of tourist arrivals over the years. This visible achievement is attributed to the combined efforts between various stakeholders including the ministry, its agencies, the private sector, civil society organizations, development partners and the NRM government that has provided security and safety for the sector to flourish. Through the attraction of many people that come for safaris, 